this tutorial is on matrices. Now matrices is the plural form for matrix. Now what a matrix is, is it's a collection of data or numbers that are organized into rows and columns. For example, a matrix like this. Here we have some numbers that are organized into two rows and three columns. Now the individual numbers within a matrix are known as an element. For example, the element in row 1 and column 2 is 3. Or another example could be the element in row 2 and column 3, which is 5. Now that we have a basic understanding of what a matrix is, Let's take a look at some of the basic operations that can be used with matrices. For example, let's start off with looking at addition. So here in example one, we have two matrices that are being added together. Now an important concept to remember when adding matrices is that they have to have the exact same dimensions. For example, with our first matrix, it has three rows and one column. Now that means our second matrix here has to have three rows and one column as well, which it does. It has three rows and one column. Now because the two matrices that we're adding together have the same dimensions, we know that the resulting matrix, after adding the two other matrices together, will also have the same dimensions. So this resulting matrix we'll have three rows and one column, just like the other two matrices. Well, now that we know that, how do we add the matrices together? Well, we take an element from a certain position in the first matrix and add it to the element in the second matrix that's in that same exact position. So for example, in matrix one, if we took the first row, first column, that would be the element that is 3. Now we would need to add it to the element in the second matrix that is also in the first row, first column, which happens to be the 0. And the resulting sum would go in to the first row, first column for the resulting matrix. So when we do this, we have 3 plus 0 which gives us a result of 3. So 3 would go in the first row, first column for our resulting matrix. Now we need to do the same thing for the rest of the elements in the matrices. So now let's go to the second row, first column of the first matrix, which is negative 7, and then we're going to add it to the element that's in the second row, first column of the second matrix which is 5. So when we add those together, we get a negative 7 plus 5, which is a negative 2. Now that result is also going to go in the same location for the resulting matrix. So in row 2, column 1. So that would be right here. Now let's do the same thing for the last elements. So we have in row 3, column 1, an element of 1. And then for the second matrix, in row 3, column 1, we have a negative 2. So now when we add those together, 1 plus a negative 2 gives us a resulting value of negative 1. Now that is going to go into the third row, first column, of our resulting matrix. So after adding the two matrices together, we get a resulting matrix that looks like this. Now let's take a look at another example. Now here with example 2, we have another addition problem. But remember, if we want to add matrices together, they have to have the same exact dimensions. So for example, with the first matrix, we have two rows and two columns. But if you notice with the second matrix here, we do have two rows as well, but we have three columns here. So we can't add these together. So for example 2, this would be an operation that we can't do. 
Now let's take a look at an example with subtraction. Now when you subtract matrices, the same rules apply as they did with addition. So we want them to have the exact same dimensions. So with our first matrix, we have two rows and two columns. And then with our second matrix, we also have two rows and two columns. So we know that when we subtract these two matrices together, we'll get a resulting matrix that is also two by two, or in other words, has two rows and two columns. Now let's start doing the subtraction. Let's start with row one and column one. So with the first matrix, the element that is in row one, column one, is zero. And then we're gonna subtract it to the element in matrix two that is in row one, column one, which in this case is three. So now when we do the subtraction, zero minus three gives us a value of negative three. So we could put that in row one, column one for our resulting matrix. Now let's do row two, column one. So in matrix one, that element would be negative four. And then we're gonna subtract it with the element in matrix two that's in that same position. So row two, column one would be the negative one. Now here you have to be careful with your negatives because we have a negative four minus a negative one. Well, minus a negative is a double negative. So it changes to be a positive or a plus one. So negative four plus one gives us a value of negative three. So we know in row two, column one of our resulting matrix, we'll also have a negative three. Now let's do row one, column two. So in our first matrix, that would give us an element of six. And then we're gonna subtract that with the element in matrix two, that's also in row one, column two, which in this case is nine. Now when we do six minus nine, we also get a value of negative three. So in row one, column two of our resulting matrix, we'll have a negative three. Now let's work on the last element. So in row two, column two, we have a one in our first matrix. And then we're gonna subtract that with the element in the second matrix that's in row two, column two, which in this case for us is a negative five. Now when we do the subtraction, we do one minus a negative five. Well, that's a double negative so rather than minusing a negative number, we're gonna add. So one plus five gives us a result of six. So we know in row two, column two of our resulting matrix, we'll have a value of six. So after taking the first matrix and subtracting the second matrix from it, we get a result of this matrix right here. Now let's take a look at another operation that could be used with matrices. So here with example four, we have a scalar, or in this case a two, that's being multiplied to this matrix. Now when something like that happens, all we have to do is just take the scalar and multiply it to every element within the matrix. So let's do that. So first of all, let's do our row one, column one. So we'll do two, times our element in row one, column one, which is a negative one. Well, two times negative one gives us a result of negative two. So we could put that into our resulting matrix in row one, column one. Now let's do the second row in column one. So we have the scalar of two being multiplied by the three. Now that gives us a result of six. So we'll put six in our resulting matrix in row two, column one. Now let's do row one, column two. So we'll take the scalar and multiply it by the element there, which is a value of five. So we have two times five 
which gives us 10. So we put 10 in the resulting matrix in row one, column two. And now for the final element. So we'll take the scalar and multiply it by the eight that's in row two, column two. That gives us a 16. Now we can put that in our resulting matrix in row two, column two. So when we take our matrix and multiply it by two, we get this resulting matrix right here. Now let's move on to another example. So here with example five, we have a combination of things going on. We have matrices that are being multiplied by scalars and we also have subtraction. Now we can do the subtraction because these two matrices have the same dimensions. They're one by three, or in other words, they have one row and three columns. Now before we do the subtraction, we want to multiply the scalars first. It's just like doing the normal order of operations, except we're doing it with matrices. Now let's start off by multiplying the scalar to the first matrix. So first of all, we have this three times a negative two, which will give us a value of negative six. And then also we have a three times one, which gives us a value of three. And then we have a three times six, which gives us 18. So now we've simplified our first matrix. Now let's go on and do the same thing for our second matrix. So now we have a one half times four, which gives us a value of two. And then a one half times a negative eight gives us a negative four. And then one half times zero just gives us zero. So now that we've done that, let's do the subtraction, starting with the elements in the first column. So we have a negative six minus two, which when we do that, we get a value of negative eight. So we could put that into our first column for the resulting matrix. Now let's do the elements in the second column. So we have three minus a negative four. Well, minus a negative will make it a positive. So we're actually doing three plus four, which is seven. So we could put seven into our second column for the resulting matrix. And now let's do our last element. So we have an 18 minus zero, which gives us a value of 18. So we could put that in for our last element in the resulting matrix. So after simplifying the matrices by multiplying them with their scalars and then doing the subtraction, we get a resulting matrix that looks like this. Now we have one final example to look at. So here with example six, we already have an equation made, but we actually want to solve for a specific variable. So if you notice, we have this x variable right here. And we wanna find out what it is. So we'll have to set up an equation that will allow us to solve it. Now since addition is involved, we want to use the respective elements that are in the same position as our x. So we want to use this negative 1 as well as this negative 9. Now if we want to make our equation, we need to do the math accordingly. So to start off, we have this scalar of 2 that's being multiplied to the first matrix. Well since our x is within that first matrix, we need to multiply it by 2. So we'll have a two times x. And then we need to add it to the element we wanna use, which for us is gonna be this value of negative one, because it's in the same position as our x. And then that's all gonna equal the value for the element that's in the same position as our x, which is negative nine. So now we have our equation set up. Now we need to isolate x. 
So the first thing we could do is get rid of this negative 1 by adding it. So we'll cancel on the left side, and then we'll add it to the right side. So then we're left with a 2x equaling negative 9 plus 1, which gives us a value of negative 8. Now from here we just need to divide by 2 to get the x by itself. And that leaves us with x equaling a negative 8 divided by a positive 2, which gives us a value of negative 4. So for this example, our x would have to be negative 4 in order for this equation to work out. And that concludes this tutorial.